Anyone can tell you what a class constructor is, but not everyone can explain the limitations of a constructor. It has no return type, it is always this class. And it has no means to handle inappropriate input values other than throwing an exception. Oftentimes that is not an issue, but sometimes in deep domain modeling it becomes quite a limiting. Now stay with me for this demo and I will show you what a smart constructor is, when you will want to implement one and how to do that right. This is the class which is modeling money in a large application and it is implementing this interface. Here, the interface is uh, specifying operations on money, the abstract operations, arithmetic operations. Now, look at the details of this concrete class. For example, adding two instances of money requires equal currencies. That is one constraint of the money class that must always be observed. On the other hand, observe that the constructor of this concrete implementation throws if the amount is zero. This money can never be zero, it is always positive. Now, what if we have no money? That is where another special implementation comes, the no money class. It is singleton and it ignores currency altogether. You can always add zero to any money amount and it will succeed. This class is implementing the null object pattern, one of the simplest but most powerful patterns in existence. You can watch the video on null object pattern which I have made before. But now let's focus on uh, the problems we will have when we start using this system of classes. Here this is the subtraction of money instances and that is where null object implementation becomes important. If the two amounts are equal and the currency check has passed, then the result is money that is zero. Now you can see that the methods of this class are adapting to the input, they are reacting depending on what the potential result would be and they even choose the type of the returned object. The constructor is not at that level. Look, it just fails in situations where a null object instance would be appropriate. It fails because constructor cannot return, cannot populate or initialize an object of a different type. And that is where smart constructors come into play. A smart constructor is just a static method, like any other. It is a factory method, but it makes the use of this class special. Look, it has a return type and then comes what constructor cannot offer. For one thing, return the base type, the abstract type, that is the interface in this case, so that you can choose which actual type to instantiate depending on the argument values. Second, opt not to return an object. This method, this factory method does not promise to always create an object. That is what constructor always promises and sometimes fails to deliver. A smart constructor says, well, it depends on the argument values you pass in. Sometimes it won't be possible to create the requested object. I'm modeling that with a nullable reference here. Third, communicate that to the caller. Say, try create, I might not be able to create, I'm not promising to create. And then comes the detail, hide the constructor away, make it private. This coding pattern defines the smart constructor. It is more powerful than a common constructor in a sense that it might choose which runtime type to instantiate and it has a special ability to choose to not even create an object and it says that both through the name and through the return type which is a nullable reference. And now we can implement it. It should be very simple now that we have set everything up. Analyze the patterns. A negative amount is never allowed. We can never create a negative amount of money. 
and we return null indicating back to the caller that the arguments did not produce any object let the caller cope with that now zero zero is a special value it ignores currency altogether and just returns no money instance now this is the case the common constructor cannot cover otherwise we know that the amount is positive and so we must check the currency if it is not set then it's not possible to create a money instance there is no money with no currency finally the positive case the amount is positive and currency is set we can instantiate this class and that was the point why we had this smart constructor in the first place this completes the smart constructor coding pattern and it shows everything the common constructor cannot do it can choose the runtime type of the result and it can choose whether to create the result or to avoid creating it if it is not possible back at the common constructor its role now becomes to only set the fields the smart constructor is the entry point to this class now now before i show you how easy it will be to use this smart constructor and how simple the calling code will become let me ask you a favor please like this video if you liked it so far that will help me spread the word about this video and let me also invite you to become a sponsor of this channel if you become a sponsor you will have access to the source code of this uh, demo and all other demos uh, on this channel you can find the link uh, to my patreon page in the description thank you very much now let's get to the calling end we have moved the ball to the caller's yard this class is applying a logic to create money this is quite complicated look it is analyzing whether it has currency or not the object is populated from the database and hence it doesn't know what values it has got now if it uh, has no currency it will initialize no money otherwise it will initialize proper money now, we don't need this logic anymore it is part of the smart constructor code is already becoming simple but it has uh, an issue because the smart constructor doesn't promise to return the object now we must handle that at the calling site and we say hey this came from the database and database is only populated from this application so this application had to pass constructor validation at some point in the past before persisting the money amount in the database oh it must be safe let me use the bang operator it will certainly dismiss the compile time warning but i'm still worried you know in case that the database was really corrupted let's throw the exception here and stop propagation of faulty data now looking at this code i guess that this will be a common pattern in code then why not implement it along with a smart constructor here the factory method which promises to always return an object obviously this method cannot keep its promise at any time and it will have to stop the propagation of erroneous data by throwing an exception it is halfway there between the common constructor which throws on invalid data and the smart constructor because this method is still returning an abstract type it is still doing more than the common constructor is doing and that will eventually make the caller simpler while equally safe as before another caller and the same pattern again this proves my point and the same simplifying effect again so this completes the implementation of the smart constructor it makes all objects 100 percent correct now one last note about smart constructors in languages that support optional objects it is common to return an optional money here C sharp unfortunately has no support for optional objects yet all it does is to support nullable reference types at the moment if you want to learn more about optional objects watch this video i have prepared on that topic and then get back here to smart constructors and see how optional objects fit perfectly together with such a concept as the smart constructor